All right, students, welcome to part two of our wonderful thing on rational functions. All right, here we go. Uh, what we were doing before is graphing basic functions. We started with something like y equals 1 over x. Now, I don't want to claim that that's basic, but what I mean by that is you have a 1 on top. There's not many numbers that are easier to work with than 1. And you just have a single x. There's nothing else. That's what we already covered. Okay, so this is what we call our mother function or our parent function, okay? This has a couple of important things. It has an asymptote, okay? And that's critical, all right? Uh, and that, that defines a lot of what the graph has. I'm mentioning this because this is probably something new from that we did not encounter in any other chapter. So it's new for a lot of us. Okay, let's move on. So we already graphed that basic parent function. Now what we wanna talk about is how do you graph something like uh, 1 over, let's say instead it had like an x minus 3. Okay. So how we would do this is just like before we're going to do table values. Okay. We know a little bit more about this because we did the previous one. So if you take a look at this, we got to look at the bottom here. And this is the whole key thing. There's a vertical asymptote. when the denominator is zero. That's the key. We can't let the denominator equal zero because you can't define, you can't divide by zero. Okay, so this one's not too bad. We think, okay, what number would make that zero? Or if you're not sure, what we're doing really is saying this thing, when does it equal zero? And we're going to try and solve that. Okay, so whether it was like 2x minus 19, uh, 1 half x plus 34, doesn't matter. Set it equal to zero. Solve it using algebra, as we're doing here. Okay, vertical asymptote will be now at x equals 3. Okay, so vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals 3. That's our key thing. Okay, that's going to be a very, very key feature. So the, what we're doing is we're, going to, we're doing this before we actually graph it. We're finding the location of the asymptote because um, before we make a table of values, before we graph it, we need to know where are we centered. Okay, it'll make sense right now. What we're going to do is make a nice straight graph and go straight down like that. And let's go over here. Okay, and at x equals 3, that's our key point. There it is, x equals 3. So 1, 2, 3. There's an asymptote there. So what that means is it can't cross that point. What that means for you is we're going to do these graphs by putting a dashed line there, saying this is a boundary line. The graph will not cross. Okay, so then what does it do? Well, as we get towards there, uh, I'm going to use my flexible uh, eraser here. Here it is. This is actually an eraser. All right. But uh, what it is is, I like it because it's kind of flexible. What it is is if you think about this curve, a straight line might go here and then, oh, can't get to that brick wall. Okay. Well, the function has to keep going. Okay. It doesn't just stop at the asymptote. What it does then, it, in order to keep going, it turns and it goes parallel to the asymptote. Okay, it starts going really, really close to the asymptote, but not reaching it. So it turns and it shoots up. Or it might turn, on this side, it might turn and shoot down towards negative infinity. So that, that twist there, that's our sort of shape, that curve there. Okay. That's all good and well, but you're wondering, well, how the heck did you figure that out? How do you get that? Let's back it up a step. We did the math. We found the asymptote. Now what we got to do is try some points around the asymptote. So over here, we're going to make our table of values. All right. And what I'm going to do is put 3 down here. We already know that 3 is undefined. Because when you plug in 3, you'll get a 0 on the bottom. All right. If you plug in 3, you get a 0 on the bottom of this fraction. Can't have that. So 3 is undefined. But we can still find out what's going on at 0, 1, 2. And we'll still want to know what's happening at. Four, five, six. Okay, so 
Let me rewrite our original equation again. 1 over x minus 3. So when we plug in 0, we get 1 over 0 minus 3, or negative 1 third. Okay, that tells us something. At 0, we've got to go down negative a third. Okay, so that's our first point. 0, comma, negative 1 third. Because here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. It's only a third down. Okay. Let's plug in 1. We get 1 over 1 minus 3, which is negative 1 half. So we go over to 1 and then down a half. Plug in 2, we get 1 over 2 minus 3, which will be 1 over negative 1 or negative 1. Alrighty. So 2 and negative 1. Okay. So those points are all really close. Okay. But since we already graphed the other ones uh, on the previous steps, this is going to act the same way. Okay, so what I mean by acting the previous the same way as the previous ones was we already know uh, from the previous section that if you get too close to an asymptote, it can only do one thing. So it's either two things. It's either going to go shoot down or it's going to shoot up. But basically, since we knew these ones are on the downside and they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller, it's going to look that way. As we go out this way, it's going to flatten out. Okay, and you can verify that by trying numbers like negative 5 and stuff like that, and, and you'll verify the, what points that is. Okay, let's go ahead and try on this side. We sort of know what's going to go on, but let's do the table of values just to verify it. If you plug in 4, you get 1 over 4 minus 3, which gives you 1 over 1, which is 1. So 4 and 1, there it is. Okay. 5 will go 1 over 5 minus 3, and again, it's 1 half, and then 6 will be the same. So what you're noticing here is the numbers are the same. We had a negative 1 half, we had a positive 1 half. We had a negative 1, we had a positive 1. Not always going to be exactly like that, but the reason that is is the symmetry. Okay, if you look at these, this point corresponds with this point. They have mirror images of each other. Okay, So at the asymptote, it shoots to infinity on this side shoots down towards negative infinity on that side. Okay, so all most of these, I want to say all, but most of these graphs are going to have vertical asymptotes. Okay, not always, but all the ones we will encounter in Algebra 2. All right, thanks for watching, and if you tune into step into uh, part 3, we'll be doing things like what happens when you have 5x minus 3 over 2x plus 3? It looks worse, but it's in the same family as these ones. And that's the same family as that one. So not so complicated, a little more complicated. And then now we're going to add even more complications. But we have the steps, we have the tools. You can be successful, and that's what I'm here to do, help you be successful. Thanks for watching, and bring questions to class.